Good evening, everybody. Uh, we will reconvene the regular Board of Education open session at 7.02. We would like to wish Susan Pavakin a very happy birthday. She is the wife of Charles, who is the technical guru, guru for the school district who's been putting in a lot of hours. Um, happy birthday, Susan. And um, Maritza Travanti will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand, hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Maritza. Um, roll call is we're all here in our places. There, we had a closed session prior to this meeting and we took no reportable action. Up uh, first is an order of business. We have three uh, sets of minutes to approve. I'll entertain a motion on all three and take it as one action. I will move. So move. And I'll second. second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Will you please call the roll? Board Member Gilliland? Yes. Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board Member Travanti? Yes. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Um, up next, we have Employee of the Month. Um, and I, Dr. Trosian. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hello, and I am delighted to uh, begin with a celebration. I think I'd like to invite Dr. Jackson. Are, are you gonna go first or will uh, Mr. McKendrick be doing that? Mr. McKendrick will be doing the honors. All right, Mr. McKendrick. All right, thank up. you very much. It is my pleasure. Um, board President Hammond and the board cabinet, Thank you for this opportunity to present our Employee of the Month, Ms. Chris Wasut. We are very happy to have her on our campus. This is her, I believe, second full year with us, but she has brought over 35 years of experience in education as a SPED aide. Um, she has classroom experience, like I said before, um, of over 35 years. She's worked in LA Unified, Pasadena Unified, and, and in private schools. Her passion and drive come and, and affect our populations of kids. And what most um, drives her is seeing the light bulb go off in, in the kids' heads and that eureka moment. Um, she loves the high school age and um, she has two Dodgers and they're both very well educated. One is a social worker and one is a vet tech. She was born in Indiana. She went to Purdue University and we forgive her for being a Bears fan, Bulls fan and a Cubs fan. Um, she is very hardworking and loves the brick and mortar environment and working directly with the kids and has transitioned seamlessly uh, to the virtual world and on daily keeping track of the minutes and the, um, the subjects she covers with each and every one of her students. Um, she's just been amazing and a huge support. And that's one of the reasons she decided to be an A because she knows what a full-time teacher needs. And that's what she gives Ms. Moraga every single day and all of her students, 110% of all that she has, and she's just a very charismatic, sweet, and kind, loving, hardworking person, much deserving of the Employee of the Month for October 2020. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be nominated, and it's an, uh, a much more bigger honor to be uh, chosen. And I want to thank Vice Principal McKendrick and Ms. Moraga for making my high school years happy years. Um, and uh, I feel very much at home in the MUSD family. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chris, and congratulations to you. It thank is you a, big deal. It's a big deal to be the employee of the month and especially in an inauspicious place such as Canyon where you guys do magic working with kids. Thank you. You're quite welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do and congratulations. Thank you very much. 
Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. Well, next time we'll see, I'll, I'll make when I see you in person, I'll shake your hand in person. <laughs> when no <that> problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Up next, keeping with uh, Canyon Oaks, we have our stu student board member report, um, Ellie Hendry. And before Ellie gives her. No, I, got, I, I have it, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy? Yeah. I, I have it. So let, let's do let's do Ellie first. Oh, would you like to do her oath of office first or for Mr. McKedrick to introduce her? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about something else. This is the odd part, folks, of having Zoom because I can't look at somebody, <laughs> as I think as all of our kids know. So Kathy, you go ahead and do, where, go where you are and I'll follow. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Hammond, what I'd like to do is invite Mr. McKendrick to tell us a little bit about Ellie Hendry before we, uh, actually, why don't we hold off, Ellie, why don't we do the oath of office and then we can talk about how great you are uh, mm -hmm. and allow you to say a few words. Uh, okay. And Board President Hammond, what I'd like to be able to do is uh, administer the oath of office seated so that uh, we're still within camera and everybody has the opportunity to see Ellie, if that's okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Ellie, if you would simply follow along, uh, state your name, I, Ellie Hendry. I, Ellie Hendry. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California in the Constitution of the State of California. That I will take this obligation freely. That I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations, Ellie, and welcome to the Board of Education. Thank you. And with that, I'd like uh, to invite Mr. McKendricks to tell us a little bit about Ellie, and then we can move to Ellie's board report. Again, uh, good evening, President Hammond, members of the board, Dr. Trosi and cabinet, friends and family, hoping other people are here to join us to see this great day for Ellie. Um, and without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our 2020-2021 school year student board representative, Ellie Hendry. She is currently a junior at Mountain Park School. Uh, she previously attended Monrovia High School. Um, a little bit about her, she likes to surf, swim, read, travel, water ski, do jujitsu before the, the before the COVID. Um, she likes to bake and wake for. So pretty much anything to do with beach, sun, and water, she is there. Um, she spent her free time over the past few months to kill time taking drives with her friends and going to the beach and other fun places. Um, she's also been at home watching movies with her family, including some of those um, of her parents' favorite movies when they were little. Um, she currently works as an assistant in her dad's dental office, preparing for surgeries for him and setting up and cleaning up. She plans to get into a good four-year college and looks to find a career in the field of science, engineering, or architecture. Uh, she's leaning more towards a job that has to do with science because, it is, because it's always been fun and made sense to her and it is her true passion. Um, before transferring to Mountain Park, Ellie was ranked second in the class of 22 at Monroe High School. And as a first year student at Mountain Park School, she loves the flexibility of working on her own time and at her own pace uh, while acquiring meaningful knowledge in all subject areas and being um, having access to small classrooms and direct contact with the teachers whenever, whenever is necessary. Ellie hopes to continue to prepare for college through the rigorous coursework provided through independent study. 
And without further ado, I'll turn the time over to Ellie for her report. Good evening, President Hammond, members of the board, Dr. Therosian, members of the cabinet, friends and families of the Monrovia community. I am Ellie Hendry, a junior at Mountain Park School. It is my pleasure to represent my school for the 2020-2021 school year as the student school board representative. I'm grateful for the opportunity I have to serve in this capacity and look forward to a new school year. I am pleased to report that Mountain Park School is growing at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. The growth, we have, the growth we have experienced is due in large part to the need for families to have a flexible schedule that fits both the demands of school and work. We have also been successful in providing laptops to all students who need them. Recently, 26 of our students received computers through a grant that would allow them to keep the devices permanently. We would like to thank Frontier and the California Emerging Technology Fund for their generous donations. That is the end of my report for this evening. Ellie, fantastic. We are so happy that you are now a part of all this and we'll look forward to your reports as they come through. Thank you. You're welcome. You did a good job on the uh, Pledge of Allegiance for the uh, State of the Schools, by the way. I, I saw a copy of it last night. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, and as I tried to mess this up a few minutes ago, I had moved something on the agenda on, under board reports. Um, the students at Santa Fe Middle School uh, made a video thanking uh, the firefighters and I wanted to give it the do, so I didn't want to squeeze it between people. I wanted to give it its own space. So I would like to present to you the video that was made by um, Santa Fe Computer Science Magnet School. to end so abruptly, but that's the end. Oh, thank you, Ms. Huff. I, I, I do appreciate uh, Santa Fe Computer Magnet School uh, with the presentation. I think it is something that a whole community feels very, very grateful for. Um, not only our fire department, but our police department and all the city departments making sure that the Bobcat fire never got into the populated area. Um, I think we all felt pretty fortunate about that. Thank you guys. Up next, we have the report from the superintendent. Thank you, President Ham, members of the board. As you noted, the second annual State of the Schools uh, address will be held virtually next 
Wednesday, October 21st at 6.30. We hope you tune in. We'll send out additional reminders and hope that uh, it is a valuable time for everybody simply to be provided with the information, successes, challenges, and steps, next steps. Uh, I also have one statement I'd like to, to read. Uh, this Board of Education has twice in the last six months adopted resolutions affirming its commitment to the teaching of tolerance and its appreciation of diversity. The board has affirmed its belief that a world-class education requires an understanding of all people of the world and has chronicled events during which mankind has committed unspeakable horrors upon their fellow man. This board has clearly stated that one of the most effective ways to reverse the progression of racism that results in violence and ultimately genocide is the cultivation of a robust democracy which inherently protects against the targeting of and aggression against people based upon, among other things, ethnicity. This board has resolved that in furthering its commitment to a healthy democracy, it will voice its opposition to all forms of racism, discriminatory actions, and the incitement of violence. For those reasons today, I would like to take a moment to note the existential threat Armenians in Artsakh are facing from attacks by Azerbaijan and bolstered by Turkey, the country that once tried to annihilate the Armenian people from that region 105 years ago. Since September 27th, Turkey and Azerbaijan have been indiscriminately firing cluster bombs and other prohibited munitions into residential areas, as documented by Amnesty International. Following the ceasefire, Azerbaijan continued bombing Armenian churches and villages. Left unchecked, Turkey and Azerbaijan, with a combined population of 100 million, will complete the work of the Armenian Genocide, the destruction of the world's first Christian nation, a democracy of just 3 million people struggling to survive on the frontier of world freedom. I feel compelled to speak today because when I hear about the conflict, following the protests of hundreds of thousands across the globe, the accounts place greater import on neutrality than accuracy. Accuracy requires the identification of an aggressor it did 105 years ago during the genocide, and it does today. I am disappointed by the lack of action to bring peace to a small mountainous region of the world and urge those of you listening to learn more about this latest instance of man's inhumanity to man. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Trussi. Up next, we have public comments. Uh, Ms. Huff, do we have anyone who wishes to speak to the board for any item that is um, on the agenda? On the agenda, no. Do we have anyone who wishes to speak to the board on any item not on the agenda? Yes, Board President Hammond, uh, we have one public comment tonight. Uh, it comes from Scott Mooney. Uh, Mr. Mooney writes, I would like to express my support of the district submitting a waiver for in-person instruction for grades TK through two, students at all, or some of our elementary schools. This group of students is disproportionately impacted by distance learning and parents need the option to give them some amount in person, give them some amount of in-person instruction. I have seen this firsthand in my own home. Distance learning is not ideal for any student, but my third grader can make it work. My TK and kindergarten children struggle greatly. I especially worry that they will not sufficiently learn to read without in-person instruction from a qualified teacher. I have faith that our district leaders can create and manage policies and procedures that safely allow students to return to classrooms on a limited basis. I know many parents will choose not to send their children back to campus if given the opportunity, but there are also many parents who want their children to receive some amount of in-person instruction. I believe a plan can support the needs of all stakeholders, even if it means school looks vastly different and some students return for only a few hours per week. I want to acknowledge the work of district staff in creating the learning pod structure. This certainly serves a child care need many parents have, but does not change the mode of instruction. 
Certainly, we can work together to develop plans to provide needed in-person instruction to our most vulnerable young students. And that is from Mr. Scott Mooney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mooney. And I will make a comment back because this is imperative to understand. The waiver that the LA County is talking about, Monrovia does not qualify. It doesn't qualify yet, I will say. I will say that as soon as Monroe qualifies, we will have our paperwork in the pipeline and do it expeditiously. Um, the, the main criteria right now, as far as the county is concerned, is there is waivers for um, low, very low social economic schools and private schools. And unfortunately, Monrovia Unified does not meet that criteria. Um, but I give you our the word as the board that we will have our paperwork in the pipeline um, and ready to go when it comes our time for waivers. Thanks, Mr. Mooney. Anyone else? Um, anyone else, Ms. Huff? Sorry about that. No, there are no more. Okay, then we'll close public comments and we'll move on to informational reports and presentations. Dr. Tarosi. Thank you, President Hammond, members of the board. Uh, today was the first day of learning pods. Uh, and uh, it we have our students registered. And Ms. Huff, just go ahead and, and flip through those learning pod slides just to give a, a sense of what the in-room environment was like. There's six feet between all students. We have uh, staff helping students get on board and into their instruction. Uh, and just from a personal perspective, it was delightful to see children again in our schools and in our classrooms. Uh, and watching our students stand and say the pledge and follow along, uh, our, our team is doing an extraordinary job. And I, I know that there are some additional um, parents who may be interested in enrolling their students in their children in our learning pods. Uh, an information item will be going out to all kinder through eighth grade parents through Parent Square in the next couple of days, providing additional information about registration so that we can get more students enrolled into our pods. So please stay tuned for that information if you are interested in um, having your child participate in one of those pods. Uh, in the next slide, uh, just a, a reminder of the learning pod fee structure that had been approved last week. I, I've had a conversation with uh, John Wilson from the Boys and Girls Club that is uh, running their program independently at Mayflower Elementary School. They began uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yes, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. And their hours are from eight to six. Uh, and they are, uh, when I was speaking to John today, uh, he was interviewing in order to open up additional pods. Uh, we've been discussing the disparity between our learning pod fee structure and they are actually uh, moving some things around. We'll be working with them and a new MOU will be coming to the board for approval, which will allow for greater parity between uh, the costs of both programs. And again, our program is really during the school day, does not include the after school until six o'clock at this time theirs does, uh, but they we are working towards great, getting greater parity and I believe that some changes have already been made to uh, the Boys and Girls Club structure, uh, fee structure specifically. Next slide, please. Uh, we also thought it would be helpful to provide uh, an update on the learning loss mitigation funds. A few weeks ago, Dr. Kaiser uh, provided an overview of the the LCAP, the second one, the uh, Learning Continuity and Attendance Plan, 
and the learning loss mitigation funds that accompany it. Uh, these are funds that need to be expended entirely by December. And there are four main categories in which each of the funds would be uh, invested in order to help mitigate uh, the learning loss and improve instruction, technology, education, distance learning support, and uh, textbooks. Uh, in the next slide, I can, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Puvakin, husband of birthday girl, Susan Puvakin, to explain these uh, items. Or I can do it myself. <laughs> oh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so we basically have um, uh, categorized into the network uh, devices and hardware and, and staff support. Um, staff support uh, up uh, later this evening. We're planning to bring in some temporary staff just to help out with our, our work orders. Uh, we do have some network upgrades that we have done, such as uh, web filter. Um, we are planning to, we're currently going out for, for bid for uh, server, HVAC, and power. Uh, the majority of the cost, though, is device and hardware. Uh, we had purchased some Chromebooks earlier in the year, and we are planning to purchase some teacher devices uh, in the next upcoming weeks, which include a document camera, a, a teaching device. Um, for some of uh, the teachers out there, they will be getting a tablet as well. Um, as well as computer speakers. Uh, you'll be surprised how um, devices, when you add a few pieces here and there, it, it, it all adds up. And, and that's uh, pretty much when you sum it all up, it's uh, close to $2 million. Thank you, Mr. Puvakin. Uh, in the next slide, uh, we have from our Educational Services Department, Dr. Kaiser. Good evening, board. Um, in the area of our educational programs, we have looked very carefully at exactly what our needs are at this point during this distance learning time. And so we have those categorized into these areas, our curricular support, which includes many of the, the apps that were necessary to make distance learning a success. Um, professional development, which includes the time that was given to teachers before school started to make the transition and to get ready for the distance learning. Um, social emotional learning with the onset of new programs in this area. Um, we have trained teachers and we have purchased curriculum that will be for this COVID time and it will also be ongoing. So these are products that we will be able to use in the future as well. And we've taken a look at developing our social emotional learning program from TK all the way through grade 12. In fact, it starts in preschool and making it very systematic and very consistent so that we're addressing those needs of our children. And then in the area of the arts, um, we have, we know that the arts engage students and we're continuing to bring arts forward during this COVID time. And so in the area of the arts, we have dedicated funds to the, the tune of $64,000. So this is our Ed Services piece of, of programming from the Learning Loss Mitigation Funding. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Next slide. Uh, business Services, Ms. Wu. Yes, good evening. For, okay, let me just. For um, our part, um, we were able to use all those employees who, whose private job description close associated students while in their on campus. So we give them a, a additional new role. For example, we have a bus driver. They are come to the district boardroom to help the IT uh, device delivery and the IT help desk. We also have a, a campus security guys to help deliver the meals as well as uh, safeguard the meal um, offer stations. We, we also have a bus, bus driver deliver a meal to the home who was ab not able to pick a meal at the very school site. 
So um, as of right now, we almost uh, um, spend all our allo allocation. We'll continue looking for the new way so that make sure that our learning loss mitigation are used properly and really support our distance learnings. Thank you, Ms. Wu. Uh, next slide, please. As I mentioned, the, the amount has to be expended entirely by December. We are in the process of collecting some information and, and placing some of the orders. All orders need to be placed and received by December. Not all of those have been placed, not all have been received. And some of these uh, amounts may change as we work through the process, but uh, our total will neither uh, grow nor diminish in, in terms of the entire budget. Uh, any questions? Any questions of Dr. Trosian? Ed? Yes, Dr. Trosian and Charles. Uh, we're adding a lot of technology that wasn't foreseen in our technology plan. And while right now probably isn't the time to go through our technology plan and update it, uh, what do you see as the timing being on that to update that and make sure all these new all this new uh, technology we're getting in, the new hardware we're getting is maintained and uh, scheduled for replacement at the right times. So that's gonna be a big, a big concern as we go forward with the budget. So we're gonna need a revised, uh, I would think we're gonna need a revised technology plan. Have you thought about the timing on that? Uh, right now, I'm just uh, quite honestly trying to get a lot of things in place. <laughs> for what right. could become. And uh, I haven't all put it all to paper yet, but I can already tell you that right around the corner, we're gonna have about, I think 600 uh, devices. Um, once you factor in all that we're purchasing, we'll probably have around 600, uh, don't hold me to it, I'll just say plus or minus 50 <laughs> that are gonna be expiring that we're gonna have to replace. So right after we get um, these expenditures done, um, the work's not done, there's still more, more to go. Um, there are things that I know are, are out of date that we will have to plan for. Anyone else have questions? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I go? Go. Charles, this question again is for you and the technology. And I know that you and your staff are working really hard um, identifying what is needed within within this budget that's been allocated for technology. But the other piece of it is when it actually comes in <laughs> and everything that you have to do to install on those devices and the filters and the protections and everything else. So uh, I know that there's going to be a heck of a lot more work um, besides just identifying, but then once it all comes in, there's a lot more work there. So uh, I do appreciate you and your staff and all the hard work um, that you were doing right there. What I did want to um, to talk about is some of these devices are going to be repurposed, whether it's to clerical staff or other staff members, but also repurposed to students. So how close, or do you expect us to be one-to-one uh, -one ratio of devices um, here soon with all the purchases that are being made? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, we do have uh, Chromebooks that uh, we did order in June, I think, and yes. they're still in, uh, on, on the way. Um, the ETA for that is early January. So with that in place, we will have one-to-one -one devices for the, the students. The challenge is what's around the corner. After that, then we'll have those 600 or so machines, give or take, that are going to be expiring. Okay. Well, great. Good to know. Thank you very much. Celine. Thank you. Dr. Therosian, can you clarify something for me? Because I heard you say something that I understood differently. And you said that the money needed to be expended and we needed to have received the devices. Do we have to receive the product before December? We do. Yes, unless there is an unforeseen delay, 
Isn't uh, everything an unforeseen delay right now? As long, if let's just say that we can't place uh, an order uh, with the vendor saying that the product will be delivered in January because that's beyond the deadline and uh, we can't pay for something we've not received, which means it won't be expended. It has to be by December. The vendor has to say it's December. Um, and we hope that everybody is honest with us and able to provide us what we need so that uh, we are able to, this, this, this is equipment that we need. Thank you. Ryan. Um, one observation first, and this is just to make sure, although we have this broken down into four different topics with specific budgets, this is an internal uh, budgeting of the funds. And if in the next month or so, we deem that we need to move this around, that's, that's at our discretion. So if, for example, um, we don't have the ability to order and receive funds, we can very simply transfer those funds to another purpose if we so desire and expend them there, correct? That is correct. I have no intention of leaving a single dime. Exactly. Um, and, and Charles, um, as Ed mentioned, I mean, our, our budget on this, very unforeseen. Uh, we're increasing the number of devices that we have. You've already expressed uh, that we're gonna have a number of other devices have the licenses expire have we calculated on an ongoing basis what it's going to take to maintain all of these additional devices? And has that number been put into uh, our most recent uh, budgets uh, on what it's going to take to maintain the, the new equipment that we're purchasing? Those are not have been updated yet uh, since the last budget you've, you've seen in a study session. Uh, but I, we are trying to stretch the learning loss mitigation funds as far as possible. So, for example, the the, the Mac devices, um, instead of licensing them um, for one year, we're, I'm maxing it out by going three years up front so that at least we can maximize uh, the learning loss mitigation funds and, and um, not have to budget for another three years for some of these licensing. So I am factoring in trying to take advantage of um, the products out there that will allow us to license three, four, possibly five years out. And then I will adjust the budget in, in future years for that. So so at this point in time, I mean, it's it's important to understand. I mean, it's just not the cost of the hardware that costs us money. It's the cost of updating the software on a regular basis that is uh, equally as expensive. Um, and so when we purchase these particular uh, tablets or uh, laptops, uh, I, I think it's important that our licenses go out at least for three years to cover our budgeting period, uh, because I don't want, <laughs> I don't want this gift for today to be a massive burden for tomorrow, um, in which we're already going to be having some difficult decisions to be made. So I, I just want people to understand uh, that we are thinking forward and that this is a, a positive for us uh, and that it is not uh, going to have a negative uh, impact on our next budget cycle. That's it. Any other questions of Charles or Kathy? Celine? I'm sorry, just something that um, Brian said brought up a thought. Um, yeah, it, do the purchase, do we need to consider um, the, the carts, the computer carts? Does the increase in, um, in Chromebooks require more computer carts, charging carts? For when do you go back? Charles, you want me to handle it? You got this one. You seem pretty excited to answer this one. No, I'll, no, you go, you go. It's your department. I'll stay in my lane. Sure. Carts are sort of the, the thing thing of the past now nowadays. It's when you start going one one to one, 
folks aren't really buying cards anymore uh, because uh, if you have cards, then you have to figure out, um, you have to buy extra power adapters, the power adapter that goes in the cart and then the power adapter for the kid. So nowadays, um, folks are just leaving the power adapter with either the kid or in, in, in the box um, so that um, they can just be plugged in to, to surge protectors. So uh, a lot of school districts are abandoning carts and there may be a surplus of carts. Uh, if we were to try to sell them, I'm not sure who'd want to buy them anymore. So it is kind of a thing of a past now. Wow, I feel old. Thank you. <laughs> Ed? Yeah, I just, I just want to compliment staff. Uh, you know, we, we see this breakdown, technology, educational bro, business services, textbooks, et cetera, and all these big numbers here. And, and I, I really want to compliment staff on a well thought out plan to use this money, not to spend this money, but to use this money wisely and to use it at places that will not only help us today and, and mitigate some of that learning loss, but will help us on into the future. And so I, I really want to compliment staff on the job you guys have done in, in identifying where the best place to spend this money is. Thank you. It helps to have a great team. Any other questions or comments? Uh, once again, Kathy, thanks very much. You don't get a lot of time to get these updates between our weekly meetings. Um, we'll announce it at the end of this meeting. We will be having another special meeting next Thursday, but I wanted to say a little bit earlier in the meeting in case folks stop tuning in before the end um, and we'll have more updates of what's happening in the district. So if there's no further questions or comments, we'll close that part and we'll go into, uh, take up the matter of the consent calendar and entertain a motion for consent. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Ms. Huff, will you please call the roll? Board member Lockerbie? Yes. Board member Trevanti? Yes. Board member Wong? Yes. Board member Gilliland? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Up next, we have Ed Services, Dr. Kaiser, a contract between Thinking Maps. Sorry. The Board of Education is requested to approve a special contractual agreement for the purchase of the consulting services and materials between Thinking Maps and the Monrovia Unified School District on behalf of the Mayflower Elementary School. This Thinking Maps program is a program that assists students in developing structures for their thinking, which relates specifically to writing. And I, I think I messed you up. That's I, 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 I threw you. A, I threw you a fastball curve, and that was purely unintentional. But, <laughs> okay. <I'm pretty> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, you, you came on like a champ there. <laughs> what way not to call out the president for making a mistake? So let's go to you <laughs> giving report on public hearing and resolution on sufficiency of textbooks and instructional materials. I'd be happy. That's an, that's an action item. <laughs> Thinking maps are a very good program and, and I hope someday you'll get to see it in action. Uh, okay, the Board of Education is requested to hold a public hearing for the purpose of receiving information relative to the topic of adequacy of textbook funding and the availability of textbooks or instructional material in the district for use during the 2021 school year and to adopt resolution number 2021-06 on the sufficiency of textbooks or instructional materials pursuant to ed code section 60119. This is a yearly um, hearing that we have and we are bringing to you board um, the information that we do have sufficiency of textbooks for all of our students in all of our courses and the, bu the budget implication is $698,498. This is the amount of money for replenishing books that are used throughout the year. Okay, the first step is it's a public hearing. So Ms. Huff, I'm gonna open the public hearing 
Uh, do we have anyone who wishes to speak in favor? We do not. Do we have anyone who wishes to speak against? We do not. I will close the public hearing and then I will entertain a motion um, for approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Ms. Huff, may we call the roll, please? Board Member Trevanti? Yes. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board Member Gilliland? Yes. Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. The motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Sorry about that, Sue. That was purely, I was re again on October 23rd and 26th with filming to begin on October 27th and to run through November 19th, Monday through Friday. I've been coordinating with Kirk McGinnis at Monrovia High School, and Kirk has been coordinating with his teachers and Randy Bell specifically. Areas of the campus which are being considered for filming include Friendship Circle, the South Gym, Room 904, the Main Lobby, Main Lobby Hallways, second floor hallways above the main hall, the portico corridor, cafeteria. No, no worries, no worries. I will, I will start from the, the top then. Okay. So as you know, we are working with MUSD's film location agency, Real to Real, and are currently planning for a film shoot at Monrovia High School with Mesquite Productions. This film shoot is an eight episode TV series produced for Apple TV by Sony Pictures Television and directed by Academy Award and Golden Globe winners, Chris Miller and Phil Lord. The series is called The After Party, which is a comedy set at a high school class reunion. Each of the episodes features a retelling of the same night told through a different character's perspective, each with its own unique film genre to match the storyteller's personality. Preparation for the film shoot is planned to begin on October 23rd and 26th, with filming planned to begin on October 27th and run through November 19th, Monday through Friday. I've been coordinating with Kirk McGinnis at Monrovia High School, and Kirk has been coordinating with teachers and Randy Bell specifically. Areas of the campus which are being considered for filming include Friendship Circle, the South Gym, Room 904, Main Lobby, Hallway Corridors, Second Floor Hallway Above the Main Hall, the Portico Corridor, Cafeteria, Teacher's Lounge, Women's Restroom, and the Football Field. Mesquite Productions is currently working with Tina Cherry and the City of Monrovia to pull the appropriate permits for the film shoot, including informing all neighbors. An MUSD employee will be with the production company the entire time they are on campus. Reel to Reel, myself and Kirk McGinnis will meet weekly to discuss the film schedule for the upcoming week and other details that need to be shared about the film shoot. MUSD custodial will be hired by the production company to clean daily. All COVID protocols set forth by Film LA will be followed including every cast and crew member being COVID tested daily. Cast and crew, when they are not filming, will be social distancing. Since the board agenda, including this agreement, was made public on Friday, there was a request made to add binding arbitration into the agreement. The addition of binding arbitration was discussed with our lawyer and added to the agreement which you see before you. Revenue for the MUSD film shoot will be approximately one hundred and forty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Any questions of Patrick? Maritza. First of all, uh, Patrick, a few weeks back or a month ago, however, what uh, when it was brought to us on the agenda to vote on, I thought it was brilliant. It was just a brilliant idea, and I knew that our school was going to be picked up almost immediately for uh, some type of film or production. So 
kudos to you for thinking this uh, through and, and including our high school. Obviously, the income is good. And it makes up for some of the income loss for not being able to use our own theater. Yes. Um, so great job there. I know that um, in the description, there's going to be a, potentially a helicopter landing on the baseball field and the use of our football field. I want to make sure that, um, you know, there isn't going to be any damage, foreseen damage, and that we're covered there because I'm sure the public wants to know that, you know, our facilities are going to be protected or refurbished if necessary. So if you could talk a little bit more about that, please. For sure. So this is this is a top flight, A-level production. And so ordinarily with a production like this, um, they, they are required by the contract to take out $2 million worth of insurance. And this production company has taken out $5 million worth of insurance. The other thing that happens is in a contract like this, there's a deposit that is given to our, uh, to Real to Real, who is our agent, and that $15,000 that they collect does not get returned to the production company until everything on our campuses has been returned to the way that it needs to be. Um, and if they need to go into their insurance, they do, but none of that $15,000 goes back to them until our campus is, is back to exactly how it needs to be. The other thing that I did because, um, you know, with the helicopter landing, they, they want to, they want to try and use the, the track on the football field, not the field itself. And so I spoke to a guy by the name of Jeb Burgess today, and he's the gentleman that recently just did work on our track. And so I basically posed the question to him. I said, okay, so, so Jeb, if we have a helicopter land on the track that weighs about the same amount as a Ford pickup truck, because the helicopter that we were told that's gonna to be coming weighs about 5,000 pounds, I believe. And so my question was, can the track withstand the weight of the helicopter? And so Jeb said, generally, yes, there should be no problem a heli with a helicopter that size landing on our track. But I also said to him, so, hey, so what if something, you know, accidental and unforeseen happens? And so he said, OK, so if something happens and we have to come out and patch the track, he said a small patch would run between four to five thousand dollars. A larger patch would run between eight to ten thousand dollars. And so both of those amounts are obviously covered in the fifteen thousand dollar deposit that they give, but they're also more than covered in the in the $5 million policy. So I, I based on what I heard today, it sounded like we were on, on pretty stable ground. The, the other piece, he talked about, you know, if the helicopter's coming down and landing and then going straight up, he said that should be uh, you know, generally no difficulty. He said that, that the, the difficulty that he could imagine is if the helicopter were trying to turn or do something like that. And I asked today, and that is not what they're planning. It's, it's straight down and straight up. Okay, very good. And then of course, uh, looking at the schedule that they have there, that does not impede in the football team that's going to be training or anything that the baseball team is gonna be doing. All that's been addressed with Randy Bell. Right. So that was the reason that Kirk and I wanted to bring Randy in to make sure that he was a part of this process. So those those concerns have been, you know, shared with Randy and Kirk and I will be meeting with uh, the production company. And I, I think Randy may be involved in that tomorrow as well. So tomorrow, uh, Kirk, myself, um, real to real, and I believe Randy will all be meeting tomorrow at 1030 just to begin the conversation about how all this stuff is going to play out. Perfect. Thanks so much again. Yeah, yeah no, thank you. Uh, up next is Ed. Uh, Patrick, I thought I heard uh, in the original discussion that the helicopter was going to land on the baseball field, but now you're saying it's going to land on the track. Is it going to land in both places or just on the track? No. So, so basically what the idea was, Ed, is their first choice have, have you been into the um, the teacher's lounge on Monrovia High School's campus? You Not lately. Anyway, there's, there's a big picture window in the back of the teacher's lounge yeah, that okay. faces the track there. And right. so the baseball field was always their backup plan. 
their their first choice if if we could do it was to always land on that track because they've got a a very cinematic idea of shooting through the teacher's lounge and seeing the helicopter land through that big picture window right there. Uh, the, the concern that brings up to me of it landing on our track is the rotor clearance. And uh, we need to make sure that they're within the uh, FAA guidelines for rotor clearance at whatever spot they're going to land this thing. Uh, not such a big deal probably on the baseball field, but on the track, there's a lot of places there that they can't meet the rotor clearance requirements of FAA. So okay. uh, we just need to make sure they're meeting that, uh, that clearance requirement. Uh, oh. And uh, we don't, we don't uh, have them catch a rotor on a goal post or a, a stand or a fence or, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of hazards around there for uh, aircraft. So yeah. I'll, I'll bring that up tomorrow and address that. Thank you. Great. Brian. Uh, Patrick, great job. I mean, in, in these yeah. difficult days, these types of uh, surprise revenue, I'm going to call it surprise revenue, are incredibly welcome. So congratulations on that. Um, th the one thing I wanted to remind whoever is going to be watching of uh, the people for the football field, especially, well, actually only for the football field, is that if there's any women, they cannot be wearing high heels because that would be sure. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's my concern. That that turf, that carpet is brand new. Right. Uh, and we need that thing to last for as many years as we can. And those type of damages that are not going to be apparent when it actually occurs, it's going to show up much farther down the line where the rip is going to happen. So uh, if they're going to use the football field for any kind of staging, um, whatever they're putting on cannot be pointy chair, folding chairs, tables, but uh, high heels, especially. Right. That's it's, it. It's funny that you bring that up, Brian, because I remembered at graduation, I don't know why this popped into my head, but when Kirk and I were walking them around the campus, I remembered that all of the ladies for graduation have to wear flats. So it popped into my head and I just blurted it out. You know, like, nobody can wear heels on this. Don't forget that. It's really important. <laughs> it is really important. <laughs> but fantastic. That, that's all I got. Thanks again. Thank you. Any other questions? Celine. I just have a comment. Um, having worked in the production industry in my youth um, and, and knowing what goes into productions, this makes me this makes me really nervous. This makes me really nervous, especially about our brand new beautiful football uh, field. The, what's carrying me through this, and what is what is lifting my faith is that it's in your hands, Patrick. Oh, thank you. So it's in your hands. <laughs> Protect our field. <laughs> Protect our turf. Yes. Um, and and thank you. I'm I'm echoing what all of the other board members have said. Thank you for thinking outside of the box and for bringing this here. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. But thank uh, you. it makes me nervous but I have faith in you. So thank, thank you, you for doing this. Thank you, thank you so much. I just have one more question. Yes. Uh, and and this probably is way off the wall, but we've got like a- more questions. <laughs> you know, we've got a student body that cares about this facility and cares how it's used. And, and they're gonna be interested in seeing this production and all of them don't have Apple TV. Is there any way that we can get a, maybe after it's shown uh, the initial time or at some point that we can get uh, copies for our students uh, to be able to uh, see how their, uh, their, their high school facilities played a role in this, in this film? That, that's a great idea, Ed. I will, I will ask that. And this, the, the folks with this production company have been very, very kind. Um, I, I cannot imagine them saying no to something like that, but I will ask. Great. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of things. I, 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 I don't nearly trust as much. <laughs> no. 
we're going to have we're going to have to get some verification here. The first is um, our neighbors. Um, I'm, I'm very well aware of the city's requirement for notification to the neighbors. Um, I want to take it another level. There's the initial, which is what the impact is going to be so that the neighbors are fully aware of what's happening, where the equipment will be, where it will be parked, how long it will be parked there. That's part of the initial um, uh, information that goes out. I would like to have the people that are adjacent to us on Violet um, have them notified as well. Okay. Um, and it's not just a matter of knocking on a door and saying, well, I tried. Um, if somebody is not at home, then I want to leave the information at their home so that they'll have it. So somebody what what, what Tina is making them do, Rob, and this is something that I think is more than what's usually required, is she's actually making them get some kind of a signature, I believe. No, and that's required. Oh, that's, that's required. Really required. So it's 90 percent of them keep going back and back and back. Okay, yeah. um, I would suggest that we want. There is a place where they'll say we've done our best and we can't get some, but if we're getting eighty five percent signatures, then okay. Um, and that's for the production. The helicopter sequence. I would like to have another notification the day before, um, so that. In the initial, we're going to have it spelt out that there may be a, uh, a helicopter sequence. For anybody who works at night and is asleep, we're going to put that thing really close by people. It's going to be very loud. I don't know if you've ever looked at the Monrovia pages on Facebook. Whenever there's a helicopter, um, it creates quite a bit of excitement. Um, I'd like to go back and notify the people again 24 hours in advance of that helicopter sequence coming and the time that it will be so that we don't upset people. So for, from what I've heard so far, and this again may, may change, but when they were talking to me about scheduling, they're talking about 12 hour days, 12 to 14 hour days starting at 7 a.m. So they're looking to do like seven to possibly nine o'clock. So I don't think there's going to be anything going terribly, terribly late. Um, that's it wasn't, it wasn't the late that I was thinking about. I was thinking about the person who worked late and comes home. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I want them no I and I want this as part of the agreement. I want a second notification going out prior okay. to the helicopter sequence. Okay. But one thing I would like to have, and I know that we have a company that is, you know, doing the head hunting for productions, but I also know that film companies look at the credits um, for different productions. And I'd like to have this as part of the motion too, that we negotiate to have verbiage, something like this, special thanks to the Monrovia Unified School District for their hospitality in the production, in this production. Yeah. Because that way, if other folks are out there and they want to use, um, have a chance to look at our school, they'll know who it was inside the production yeah. and it, it's better for us. Okay, I absolutely. I will definitely mention that. Okay, well, I'm, I'm asking whoever makes the motion to include the second notification for the helicopter and the negotiate what I just read as part of the motion. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other questions? Well, um, you, you bring up a good point, uh, Rob, and when the helicopter's there, it's not just the neighbors that are gonna be uh, all over social media. It's going to be all over social media. So I, I think we need to be proactive, uh, uh, Patrick, and post on our on our website and on our uh, other accounts, other social media accounts, that yeah. we are going to be filming there or that they are going to be filming there. And you'll see trucks, et cetera. And especially the day before the uh, helicopters there, that that be on, the, on our social media so that people know what it is and don't start um, you know, big phone in, uh, what the heck's going on? Okay. Yeah. Good point, Rob. No, thanks you guys. Your, your, your feedback is fantastic. Thank you so much. I have one more thing. Sorry, real quick, Patrick. <laughs> yes. Uh, I know that we, uh, I brought up specifically the baseball field and the football field and about practices for those teams, but also I 
want to make sure that any other teams that are will have practices going on, like the track team, the soccer team, that everybody has a place to practice away from the area so that, you know, we're looking out for all of our teams, not just the football team and the baseball team. Right, of course. I think I think Kirk has been instrumental in terms of helping us to coordinate those things. So thank you. I'm gonna I'm just gonna make a special note about that so we can talk about that tomorrow as well. And Celine. Um I I think Brian said, you know, no heels on the um on the on the turf. And I'm I'm sure you've already thought about this, but just in case you haven't, um I, we shouldn't have food set up on that either. And I, I mean like um, craft service or breakfast and lunch or anything like that, you know, uh, the barbecue, um, in, any of the food service that happens during productions. Um, yeah, yeah, should yeah. not be on on that field. Got it. Thank you. Is... Anybody else have questions or comments? Thank okay. you so much for listening, guys. I appreciate it so much. Thank All you right. for listening, Patrick. I will entertain a motion. I move that we pass this with the two editions of the second notice and uh, the um, the other item that yeah. Rob mentioned, the, the statement That's, that Rob mentioned. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? Ms. Hupp, will you please call the roll? Board Member Wong? Yes. Board Member Gilliland? Yes. Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board Member Travanti? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. All right. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate that. <laughs> Have a good time there, Patrick. All right. Have a good night, you guys. Thank you. Good night. Night. Uh, up next, we have a facility use agreement, uh, and Connie Wu is here. Good evening, board, staff, communities. The Los Angeles County Register Record Office from Contact District did request to use the, our high school campus for the November 3rd general election. After talk to the Guide administrator will locate the event center as the ideal location. And the staff from the county office, they were studying equipment deliver and set up on August 26th to August 29th. And the voting period will be October, October 30th to November 2nd from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Election day, November 3rd, will be from 6, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m and the voting center breakdown, the equipment and the, the equipment pickup will be after that times. So the county um, agreed to pay reasonable staff time and custodial time during the election period. And uh, the facility, uh, there's no payment for the facility use and the district will provide the parking space for the county crew. And uh, the county will uh, strictly follow the COVID-19 guideline to make sure that everybody is safe, including the voter as well as the county workers while they are on our campus. Anybody have any questions of Connie? Uh, oh, just one. I, I, um, hang on, Ed. I got my answer first. Okay. I'm quick on the draw. Sorry, Ed. No, uh, no problem. <laughs> So uh, the uh, the agenda item right before this, obviously, we heard was the reel to reel and the filming um, at our school site, and we're going to have quite a bit of apparatus there, uh, trailers and what have you. Um, so my question is, there's a bit of an overlap with the county of LA, the registrar being at our event center, and the other items that that are going on. So I just want to make sure that. We have already uh, made sure that we have designated parking or designated entrance and instructions for those that are coming into our uh, polling area at the event center. Yes, um, I think uh, Patrick and uh, um, high school principal Kirk McGinnis is uh, all the, in the conversation. And because of Patrick's need for filming, the um, location for the, uh, for the use of 
ice cream campus has actually is changed. So, so county, they, every time county use our location for the voting, they will send a crew to ins inspect the area, inclu including the um, availability for the uh, technology infrastructure in that specific room. So um, after they send the, um, the crew to in inspect the area and they have to be agreeing upon user specific facilities. So I thank you to uh, remind us that I will continue to work with Patrick and uh, Kirk. Uh, the other possibilities overlap. So we make sure that uh, um, different group, and uh, when they use our campus, uh, we, the district will try our best to make sure that uh, um, while they follow rule regulation, including district policy, and, and um, as well as COVID-19, and uh, they, they, they also you know, do what they need, uh, we will we definitely support the uh, county because uh, um, we as a government agency, you know, we have some uh, um, com common interest there. So um, I will make sure that I will um, re-emphasize uh, uh, the different group need and overlap. And so we will have a plan, not only plan A as uh, the facility use for various group, and we also have a plan B to address any um, potential issues which may happen. Thank you. And that of course needs to include any um ADA parking requirements that are close enough to the polling site. So I just want to make sure that we're we're covered there. So thank you. Ed. Uh, yeah, and this, I just want to know, uh, Ms. Wu, what uh, what uh, limits are? are we completely indemnified from any liability associated with? I think it's great that we're able to do this, and and I think it's our civic responsibility. I just want to make sure we're protected in that uh, we're indemnified from liability and that we're uh, protected from any kind of damage that's done. Uh, I mean, you know, if something happens to the floor on one of the, the gym or any place, uh, that can that can add up to a lot of money. So, what's our what's our protections in this? So, um, we um, I did check the indemnification clause uh, in the facility use. And also, we require their uh, um, certificate liability to make sure that uh, they add the district as additional insurance. Are, are they buying insurance for this? The county typically is uh, self-insured. That's correct. We, we do request the county provide us the certificate liability and add the MUSD as additional insurance. Okay. Any other questions? Entertain a motion. Move to so approve. Move. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Ms. Huff, will you please call the roll? Board Member Gilliland? Yes. Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board Member Trevanti? Yes. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Up next, we have Dr. Jackson. Good evening, everyone. Board President Hammond, members of the board, Dr. Tarosian, cabinet in the community. The Board of Education is requested to approve the proposed renewal of a full collective bargain agreement between the California School Associ uh, Employees Association and the Monrovia Unified School District for the period of July 1st, 2018 through July, June 30th, 2021. On September 23rd, 2020, the proposed settlements were presented to the board for public review, including all contract language adjustments that were made during the last years. Following the public disclosure, it is now appropriate for the Board of Education to take official action to approve the contractual agreements. There are no budget implications at this time. Any questions? Celine. Um, I just was wondering, Dr. Jackson, if you wouldn't mind explaining um, for anyone listening, why the period is from the past to the future, why it's from uh, 2018 to 2021. So the, the contract has to be renewed every three years. Uh, the last time uh, it expired actually in June of 2015. Um, and so it is uh, time to renew it and we're in the three year cycle. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Entertain a motion. 
Move to approve. Um, oh, muted, sorry. We have a motion. Second. And we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Ms. Tuff, will you please call the roll? Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board Member Trevanti? Yes. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board Member Gilliland? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Dr. Trojan, um red ribbon. <laughs> I can't yeah. say that. Do it three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, President Hammond, members of the board. Uh, this year, uh, we would like to dedicate, uh, dedicate and celebrate uh, October 23rd through the 31st as Red Ribbon Week. Uh, this year's theme is Be Happy, Be Brave, Be Drug Free. And this will be in a, in a virtual environment. Uh, all of our schools will have different events planned and I will be able to report out about them once it occurs. Thank you. So are we going to get red ribbons out of most of the schools, Dr. T? You know, you, those are usually done in con, uh, coordination oh. with our local PTAs. Uh, so I'm not quite sure where we are. Oh. We will have some sort of distinction and uh, the the visual symbolism is important, but also what's done with our students and the 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 work done in in reminding them to make better choices. The best. It's always nice to them. see those ribbons out and, uh, and know what they're about as you drive around town. So it if sure you can, is. That would be great. It sure is. I know how much work goes into getting all of those red silver red <laughs> ribbons out. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say a special thank you to the parents that volunteer to do that every year. They work so hard and they get up early and they stay up late and they really put in this extraordinary effort for this. And I want to let them know not only do I appreciate that, but I want to let them all know that my kids appreciate that because as they're older now and they're starting to get into leadership roles and things like that, they're so excited about this week <laughs> coming up and about celebrating that. So uh, thank you to the parents and the volunteers and the teachers and the site administrators for coordinating this and getting this out to the community. It really does make a difference. We really do. We see it. We appreciate it. And it really does touch our kids also. So thank you. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Ms. Tuff, will you please call the roll? Board Member Trevanti? Yes. Board Member Wong? Yes. Board Member Gilliland? Yes. Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board President Hammond? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Dr. Tarosian, any pending board issues? Uh, we are simply moving along with the pending board issues and bringing them back to you when the, when their time comes. Thank you. On old business, um, in the board's desire is to keep the community informed about the ever-changing world of COVID-19 and distance education. We'll be holding a special meeting on October the 22nd at 7 p.m. Um, we will have our regular board of education meeting the following Wednesday on October 28th at 7 p.m. On Wednesday, November the 18th, there will be a joint meeting of the Board of Education and the Personnel Commission. Um, and under new business, we have the Great California Shakeout on October the 15th. State of the Schools address will be on October 21st at 6.30 p.m. virtually. And Red Ribbon Week is October 23 through 31, 2020. And if there is no further business before this body, we will stand adjourned. Wait, Maritza? You have sorry, sorry. I, I just wanted to add to the Great California Shakeout. That's officially scheduled for 10.15 tomorrow morning. And the message is that you're supposed to drop 
recover and hold on. So I know um, my employer sends out a lot of information on that, but I, I do take that seriously. But yes, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> I do take it seriously because I, I really despise earthquakes and I'm very sensitive Hi. to it. You know, you're from Connecticut. Hey. <laughs> so tomorrow at 1015, please 10 practice. 15. Okay. Yeah, 1015 a.m. Drop cover and hold on. Okay. Yeah. With that, if there's no further business before this body, we will stay adjourned. Good evening, everybody. Night, everyone. Good night. Good night.